Good day, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to day three of reading the Bible in chronological order. Today we're going to be discussing four chapters in particular. That is in the book of Genesis, chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11. So we'll begin with chapter 8. Now we see that the rain stops and the waters begin to dissipate. And Noah starts sending out birds. Now the reason he sends out the birds is if the birds don't return, you've got a, a, a likelihood that they found some land that they can uh, actually uh, rest on that, that's actually land that they can, they can eat from and it's sustainable and it's habitable. So he sends out these birds, he sends out the raven, the dove, uh, and when they return, he, he sends out the dove again after a couple of days. Now this, when you're looking at it in terms of doctrine, please uh, don't just uh, don't just glaze over it and say, oh, okay, you just sent out the birds. I mean, for the reading, we, we don't want to stop and study at every point uh, or else we'll never get through uh, the Bible. And that's normally what happens is we, we stop and we get, we get sidetracked um, and then we, and then we lose track over, over the next couple of days. So for now, we're just reading through it, but remember that there is a huge doctrinal significance in him sending out the bird, uh, the birds, the dove that returns even with the, with the olive leaf in its mouth. And then seven days later, he sends it again and it doesn't return. Uh, very uh, huge doctrinal significance in that. But we see all of that happening here. Then uh, Noah is told of God uh, that, you know, he and his family and the animals can climb off the ark. They go and then Noah offers a burnt offering to the Lord. And the burnt offering reaches the Lord as a sweet smelling savor. And that's a wonderful thing. And uh, so once, once that happens, uh, God says within himself, now this is not the covenant that he makes with Noah at this point, but this is what God says within himself. Uh, that he would not curse the ground anymore for man's sake. And that is also hugely significant in terms of uh, doctrine. But now we're just going to, we're going to uh, just read through it and glaze over it in, in, in that term. But, but do think through these things uh, as the day goes on. Then we see chapter 9. God blesses Noah and commissions him to replenish the earth. And then God institutes some law pertaining to blood. He talks about not eating the blood. He talks about don't uh, spill uh, blood, innocent blood, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in those senses. So look at those, but God then institutes. Remember, this is before the law of Moses is on the scene. Um, and, and that's important to really understand. Then God makes a covenant with Noah and his sons and forms a rainbow in the cloud as a token that God will never again destroy the earth with a flood. Then it, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a short period of time and then Noah actually becomes a husbandman, which means he grows uh, uh, grapes. And uh, then from the dra uh, grapes, he, he is drunken. He, he, he makes wine and he is drunken. And then he's ridiculed by Ham, his son. And for this uh, sin, uh, the son of Ham, Canaan, is cursed, but Shem and Japheth are blessed. And then the, book, uh, the, the chapter concludes with Noah's death. Then we get to chapter 10, genealogy of Noah through Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then we see that the earth is divided in the days of Peleg. Then we get to chapter 11. Uh, and here in chapter 11, the entire earth spoke one language. Uh, then the people began to build a tower, uh, the Tower of Babel, in an effort to reach heaven. And God was really upset with them for doing this. So God confused their language. He scattered the people throughout the earth. And then the book continue, the, the chapter continues with the generations of Shem, the birth of Terah, who is Abraham's father. And then we see that Abraham marries, uh, or a Abram marries Sarai. And then Terah takes Abram and Lot and moves from Ur into Canaan now. 
And that's basically the, the four chapters that we're going to be reading through today. So that's just an overview. May the Lord bless you. And I hope you enjoy the reading for today. God bless. Chapter 8. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. And the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated, and the ark rested in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass, in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both the fowl and the cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. Chapter 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man. At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you... Be ye fruitful, and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you. 
from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. Chapter 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Reama, and Septika. And the sons of Reama, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalni in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Asher and builded Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Calah and Reason between Nineveh and Calah, the same as a great city. And Mizraim begat Ludim and Anamim and Lehabim and Naphtuhim and Pathrusim and Kashluhim, out of whom came Philistim and Kaphtorim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arbadite, and the Zemorite, and the Hamathite. And afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Geza, as thou goest unto Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, and Hull, and Gether, and Mash. And Arphaxad begat Selah, and Selah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons, the name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. 
And Joktan begat Almodad and Shelef and Hazar Maveth and Jela and Hadoram and Uzal and Dikla and Obal and Abimael and Sheba and Ophir and Havilah and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. And their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest unto Sephar, a mount of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was an hundred years old, and he begat Arphaxad two years after. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad five hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years, and begat Selah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Selah four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Selah lived thirty years, and begat Eber. And Selah lived after he begat Eber four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years, and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg 430 years, and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived 30 years, and begat Reu. And Peleg lived after he begat Reu 209 years, and begat sons and daughters. And Reu lived 2 and 30 years, and begat Serug. And Reu lived after he begat Serug 207 years, and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived 30 years, and begat Nahor. And Serug lived after he begat Nahor 200 years, and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years, and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah, and hundred and nineteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years, and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Izcah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees, to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran.